Oh, hello there. Yes, well, sticky in it, eh? Just not comfortable with my own skin. White though it is, indeed. The question is, is it white enough? Am I the right sort of white person? I don't think I am, according to a lot of people. Anyway, yeah, it's really intriguing always in comments when people don't actually want to address what you're talking about, but instead want to go off at a tangent as to whether or not the Japanese are renowned at whaling. Hard to say, really. No. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> Yesterday, uh, yes, of course, there was lots going on, wasn't there? But um, amongst it all, there was a couple of very interesting pieces put up by Tommy Robinson. Well, not put up by Tommy Robinson, but a uh, first early morning after his workout, because he's been working out, right, with the kids on holiday, yeah, all that stuff, right? Um, according to him. Anyway, he hasn't flown, according to him. Apparently, it's all perfectly legal, which I think actually does make sense. But um, he's sort of saying, basically, that his beef, if you like, is simply with violent Muslims, uh, them, yeah, uh, who come here taking us over and they're all bad. I paraphrase slightly, but not by much. And um, you can see the way that that is inherently problematic. He also did an interview with uh, an Indian TV station, uh, CNN News 18, which uh, oddly has a sort of um, quite a sort of pro Modi kind of Hindu nationalist bias to it. I'm going to say that because that's what I can make out about it. But um, you can actually see that he, he's actually asked some quite awkward questions. And and you can see that that's the way that journalism is done in a way come back to this it isn't in this country so um yeah he has forced to sort of come out with some stuff which perhaps if he was given um a softer soap by the british media he wouldn't necessarily do so it is full of uh, the kind of conspiracy laden stuff that we've come to expect whereby Anything that he can't explain properly is the result of a conspiracy by the Guardian, the GBC, BBC, leftists and uh, the liberal media establishment or something or the globalists, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, do watch that. Um, please do. But uh, going to the heart of what he's saying, OK, he's saying old oh, people are out on the streets and they're angry at two tier policing. Well, OK, and, you know, you can take that on a bit of face value. But the problem, of course, is that if you centre that notion of two-tier policing, policing just on one small group of people, then where do you take it exactly? Because, I mean, historically, two-tier policing has always been a thing. OK, the, uh, the uh, uppity British working class, ever since there has been a nebulous kind of working class in the kind of 1600s onwards, has always had to be policed, usually by regiments of foot, if you think about the Jacobites, for example. Yeah, that's always been there. And then um, new immigrant communities from, let's face it, at least the late 1800s onward also had to be policed, be they Irish or Jewish or otherwise. So the argument about two-tier policing is not new. And all of the evidence suggests that the police have always done two-tier policing. It's basically built into what they do because they are ultimately there to ensure the safety of the good gentry of this fair land. That's basically the way that that one works. Hmm. So how would you do this? How exactly would you somehow get back to a non-two-tier policing that doesn't magically just simply target one community? I'd really like some answers to that because I don't think anyone's actually got any. Yeah? I mean, um, Someone like Paul Golding and the other kind of right-wing commentators, who have been very, very happy, of course, to kind of poke at the hornet's nest with a stick, will accuse someone like me of being, you know, a traitor, a white traitor, as he put it yesterday. Yeah. But, you see, the thing is that I want to know is, what exactly is the agenda here? Do you want policing that specifically targets Muslim people across the board no matter how long they've been here, no matter how many generations they've been here, simply because they go to the wrong place on Fridays. Yeah, if they're that much of a threat, OK. But surely we could apply that to lots of other religions as well. And at which point, of course, it does indeed just simply become racist. Because if I was to argue that about Jewish people, 
you'd rightly consider that to be just right, pure out and out racism. What else could that be? And yet, here we are, magically in this world where people can argue that that's okay. Yeah, and I just want to bring up some examples from Carl Benjamin. Um, because um, he's the type of guy, because he got invited to Tommy's party a few weeks ago, he's the type of guy who now feels that he can just more and more overtly come out with this stuff. So yesterday we got this, the lists of grievances that the English have against foreigners only begins with terrorism. There are so many indignities, offences and traumas that have been done in addition to these, all tacitly upheld by the British state. Yes, well, you can notice there that the English, okay, but, I mean, historically, well, we've always had a bleeding problem with foreigners. Again, you know, think about the Catholics uh, throughout eternity who have been giving us grief. But you notice the indignities, offences and traumas that have been done against the people can easily be applied to other scenarios. So if you want to sort of say things about, for example, people in Hare Hill's writing, then why not? Yeah, okay. As Carl, Carl said at the time about Hare Hill's, this will only get worse. Who knows when they're, what they're even writing about? Well, maybe they've had indignities heaped upon them, you know, in their community, Carl, because that's what communities tend to do. And if you're going to legitimate one set of grievances, you can basically do it across the board, can't you? Yeah, as he says here, the police have fled. Chaos will ensure in this semi-autonomous foreign colonies, that word again, on the English soil. Yes, but of course, you know, for Carl and people like him who probably definitely, almost certainly aren't racist, they just don't like particular people, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> he will happily go abroad to find examples of how bad foreigners are, which is ironic in its own way. Here we go. It's far right. If it's far right to oppose mass importation of barbarians, then so be it. Okay, barbarians. Yes, the barbarians are at the gate, except, of course, um, yes, they do have beards, I suppose. They do a bit like Carl, one might say. But I'm wondering what Carl would think of uh, one of the girls that was stabbed at Southport, which is basically where we get to with these things, because because she appears, from her name, to have been from Portuguese de uh, uh, descent. So, um, I don't know, Carl. Where exactly would she fit into your hierarchy of grievances? Or is she merely an innocent child? Hard to say, really, with someone like Carl, just to be sort of horrible about it. Um, for the rest of the right-wing commentary at, um, you get the usual people like Alex Phillips dipping their toes in on the vaguely towards respectable level, but the, uh, papers like The Times and The Telegraph are monstrously silent in terms of their commentators, but there was one piece yesterday, and I really do like this, and I would wholeheartedly recommend that you come and see this. William Sitwell's piece, Welcome to the World of Conspiracy Theories, Nigel. Here are some even wackier ones for your free bar of mind. Yes, indeed, because of course we have we have the gorgeous pouting Nigel Farage, a man who just point you behind me, cannot be bothered to even buy a decent British flag. I'm willing to bet that that's plastic and was made in China. Not like my stuff, mate. It's made here, made in Britain, and bleeding proud of it, etc. Yes. And of course, yeah, Nigel Farage, who had to, of course, go to Parliament so he could have a platform for the people's views. And then he doesn't use it because he doesn't actually ask things in Parliament. He simply goes on, goes on TV and simply asks the questions, which magically can be conferred on people as a legitimization for that they should go out and maybe have a few beers and maybe get upset at the police. Yes. But my serious central point here is how exactly do you bring in laws against one religion? And what do you expect those embattled communities to do? Hmm? Because there are lots of white traitors out there who are going to be bleeding unhappy with it as well. Because what I'm, as far as I'm concerned, as a white traitor, <laughs> I need to decidedly stand on one side of the line because otherwise they'll come for me about 15 seconds later. Because after all, as Tommy says, they're commies. Hmm. Do have a lovely Sunday. Maybe go to church, eh? Enjoy.